Kanika Williams is a single mom of four boys living in Cleveland, Ohio. She has three part-time jobs, cleaning homes, delivering food with DoorDash, and sorting mail for UPS. She's active at her kids' schools, cooks them dinner every night, and stays present in their lives. Being around my kids, that's like the number one. So uh, my kids motivate me. I want us to have stuff. I want us to do stuff. Kanika puts her life together like sections of a quilt, caring for her sons, you know, making money, spending time with friends. Each piece is sewn together intentionally. When I have a roof over my head, I know when my small necessary bills are paid, necessary meaning lights, water, gas, insurance, rent. I'm not talking about Netflix or any of those wanted things. Uh, once I have those things taken care of, I have freedom. Kanika has a medical technician degree, and the rise of gig work has given people like Kanika some level of autonomy. But she reminisces about how things used to be for previous generations. Her mother, Brenda, just retired from her decades-long job as a janitor at an elementary school. I went to that school when I was in first grade, and that's where she's retiring from. So those 30-year jobs... Those 40-year jobs are gone for us unless we start right now. Between her gig work at $20 an hour and her UPS job at $16.50 an hour, both above Ohio minimum wage, she says she brings home roughly $1,500 a month. What is your definition of a living wage? Um, being able to afford your, bill, your, your monthly bills, being able to put a portion back for savings, and I think for me in my household, if I was to make $3,500 a month. What would that extra money, what would that get you? Um, that'll get all bills paid, a little bit in the bank, and maybe that oil change I might need it, you know? Union trouble. The debate over how much workers should get paid in America has a contentious history. It took decades of strikes, debates, and a Great Depression for Congress to pass a law in 1938, establishing a federal minimum wage. The federal minimum wage was last raised to $7.25 an hour in 2009, and wage growth has not kept pace with labor productivity, so workers are more efficient, but they have less to show for it, studies have found. Since 1980, most American workers have seen modest income growth, but income for the top 1% has grown much faster. Everybody who works for a living uh, deserves to be paid a wage that honors the value of the work that they're doing and meets the cost of living. Michael Shields is a researcher for Policy Matters Ohio, a liberal nonprofit economic policy institute. For the last several decades, there's been a real disconnect between uh, how much wealth working people are producing and what's being reflected in their pay. What do you attribute that to? I think it comes down to power. Larger share of all of the wealth uh, that's produced in our economy is being consolidated by the, the very wealthy and by corporations as well. Um, working people are being less successful than they have in the past in bargaining for their share of the wealth that they make possible. How did you guys meet? We met upstate New York. We were just friends at first. I actually um, told my friend I was working with that the guy who trained me was really cute, but too short for me. <laughs> and then we made plans to hang out on a Saturday. And everyone, everyone we were working was just like, is it a date? Is it a date? I think we got home at like 1, 2 in the morning. That's yeah, a good date. So, yeah. so you got over the height thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. When Taylor and Maggie Mendez started a new life in Florida, things were bumpy. Maggie working overnight to Duncan, making $11 an hour, which at the time was a dollar above the state's minimum wage. Taylor was working a factory job and both door dashed on the side. We went through some hard times, but it just, it builds character and... It made us, made us a lot stronger than, um, than we were before. Then Taylor got a job, a teller at TD Bank in Melbourne, Florida. A group called Family Promise helped them with emergency shelter and meals and taught them how to budget. Taylor's new boss helped them find housing. Once I got into banking, I knew that it was, that the, that the sky was, skies were the limit from there. But between his job, Maggie's overnight shift, and taking care of their two little ones, they never saw each other. Then their daughter got into a brand new school but there's no bus, so Maggie quit her job to watch the kids and drive their daughter to and from school every day. 
Have a good day, sweetheart. You should always try to appreciate what you have, you know? The prices of everything, of cars, um, of food, of housing, has gone up so much and income has not gone up a drop. I'm making a decent wage for what I make and there's a lot of people making a lot less than I do and I have no idea how they're making it. Staggering new inflation numbers out today. While high inflation has been making headlines since 2021, it certainly is not the first time in our country's history. Public enemy number one, inflation in 1974. Inflation has risen steadily since 2005, reaching a 40-year high in 2022, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics says. At the same time, real wages adjusted for inflation have only risen slightly. That's led to a growing call to raise the minimum wage from $7.25 to $15 an hour. Congress has debated the issue, with proponents arguing it will lift people out of poverty. No one should work as millions are doing today, 40 hours a week at a job, and still live below the poverty line. And critics saying it will cost jobs. If there is too much of an increase too rapidly, they will be forced to shrink their workforces. 30 states and four territories have already increased the minimum wage above federal law. New York is one of those states, and lawmakers have gone a step further, tying future increases to inflation. Howard Potter owns a and Master Images, a design and printing company in Utica, New York. He didn't have an easy upbringing. Raised by a single mom, he bounced from home to home until he became a ward of the state. As a person that lived in poverty at certain points, knows what it's like to go to food pantries, grow up in group homes. Um, I didn't have someone hold my hand to tell me how to make something of myself. After college, he says he was making good money at a factory, but he had a side hustle and a dream. So when he was 25, he cashed in his 401k and with hard work and grit, built his printing company from the ground up with his wife. In America, we, we kind of lose focus on what hard work really is. We think 40 hours a week is all that we should have to contribute. And then when you look back at the early 1900s and even, even after that, most people were working 60, 70, 80 hours a week to be broke. Howard likes to say his employees are family. He instituted a four-day work week and pays them a dollar above the current state minimum wage of 14.20 an hour. But when the state raised the minimum wage, he spoke up against it. You're kind of leaving small business owners no choice when the, when the state makes those mandates because they have to take on the cost. So they have to innovate and stay ahead. Otherwise, the only option is to keep increasing pricing and hope that their customers keep coming through the door. Why does the increase in pay for employees automatically mean the product has to be more expensive? It doesn't always necessarily guarantee that. Um, but in most cases, if they have a high turnover or uh, things of that nature, you got to pay to promote the job, get the next person in, all those costs increase. Why is it that when a government forces a, a wage increase, that contributes to inflation, but when other businesses are doing it, forcing you to drive up your wages, that's not contributing to inflation? Well, when you, it's a very good question because one, when you're doing it as a business, you're doing it in a timeline that you can afford to do it. So it's controlled costs. When the government does it, it's forced, it's not controlled. Kanika pieces together different sources of income to keep food on the table. I'm functioning on beans, you know, I ain't got no rice, <laughs> Just, you know. But how we make it work is put back what you take out. Got to put it back. As we get out there, we make it happen. I find, we find a way. Taylor works 30 to 40 hours a week at the bank at $20.50 an hour. This works out to about $2,500 a month. Kanika, Taylor, and Maggie all get some form of government help, like food stamps, Medicaid, and rental assistance. The fact that neither family can make ends meet without help begs the question, what constitutes a living wage? MIT has a living wage calculator, which looks at the cost of eight basic needs in each county in the U.S., According to that, Taylor would need to make $37.97 an hour to support his family, nearly twice his current wage. I mean, it's surprising, but sadly, sadly it's not surprising. Living in Cuyahoga County, Kanika, who makes less than $20 an hour, would need to make $40.44 an hour, or roughly $84,000 a year. She says she's afraid to lose her benefits if she makes too much money. Do you find, though, that the issue is if you make a certain amount, you won't be able to qualify for those anymore, but that extra amount 
doesn't replace the help you're getting. It is exactly like that. They're going to take probably Medicaid or food stamps. So now when you take my food stamps, what I'm trying to build is, is gone. You're not allowing me to do what the program is meant for. And the program is meant for people getting back to stabilization. Despite their constant financial struggles, Kanika, Taylor, and Maggie are doing what families do all the time, making the most of what they have. Kanika isn't immune from worry, but she doesn't let it rule her life. You don't have to, just because you're living on minimum wage doesn't mean you have to act like you're poor or you have to be all down and depressed all the time. Find the light in the dark and just keep moving forward because you can't stop. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.